by now it's obvious that the story of Christopher Columbus was indeed a myth. And that in actuality, which explains why we call him an Indian, he was lost and stubborn about being lost. And that the consequence, unfortunately, of his stubbornness and his discovery, however accidental, of the new world, uh, or as one of the consequences, a whole generation of people were decimated. This is why in South America, parts of South America, on the day they celebrate Christopher Columbus as a hero, they celebrate what they call the Day of Color. The day where slaves came from other cultures and mixed with their culture. They commemorate the disease, the enslavement, and the oppression, and the genocide. And for me, as learning this was a shock to me, because I trusted my teacher, my mother, the school teacher, was my third grade teacher, who also taught me that Christmas Columbus was the hero that was going And so, 17, 18, I was extremely disappointed. But I also learned this lesson about not taking everything that people teach. There's an old Roman proverb that even your mother would give you point. And it opened my eyes to uh, this whole concept of education and learning about other things, learning about other people. And when I became Muslim, when I was 23, that idea and that experience is what painted uh, my interest into Islam and what continues to paint my experience as a Muslim today. I don't take everything that people give me, uh, especially on the down. It is this experience that I had in learning about Islam, because like many of us, most of the information that I got from Islam, from the media, from TV, or from what I kind of saw in the neighborhood, I had friends that were uh, Muslim from various traditions. And so I took all of those things and formulated an idea of what Islam was and who Muslims were. And when my uh, paradigm was shattered by Christopher, um, it allowed me also to embrace Islam for what it was and for what it was. And I understood that Muslims and Islam as a community, a worldwide community, is not my I understood that and learned that there are different traditions within Islam. And that one Muslim doesn't necessarily resemble the other Muslim. And what it helped me do was it helped me learn and practice Islam for what I understood that it was. What I understood that it wasn't was what we often see on TV what we often see in political discourse and debate, the anger, the violence, the terrorism, the judgmentalism, the presumptuousness, the prejudice, the bigotry. These are things that we find in all religions, and you certainly can find them in Islam. But knowing that, and knowing that that, because you find something in Islam, doesn't necessarily make it Islam, helps me in my own faith and in my own growth. There's not much that Dr. Hamid said about quote unquote rap, and I'll come to why I say quote unquote rap. In terms of the criticism, in terms of what he pointed out about their incorrect interpretations, their incorrect practices, uh, their uh, distorted approach to uh, Islam, and then their distorted approach to how they relate to non The unfortunate thing about those that we need to talk about, and, and what many people tend to talk about in criticism about Islam, is the generalization. I don't specifically subscribe to an alphabetical or numerical limit as to how you discern a radical from a moderate. Because again, most of them are not moderate. And how in one set you get to one person is not necessarily going to be relative to another. And the danger in that is generalization. I'll give you an example just from what Dr. Hamid presented today. When he talked about the perception of weakness, I agree 100% that you cannot give the perception of weakness to people who are terrorists. 
And what Dr. Reed said was, we can assume it's a Muslim world. Now, the Muslim world is comprised of roughly one and a half billion people. There's a difference between showing weakness to people who are your enemies, who are criminals, who are terrorists, and generalizing that to a whole group of people who apparently ascribe to the same belief. The problem with that. Now, in the flyer and some of the information I saw about the day's event, it was the, one of the bylines was uh, teaching Americans or showing Americans what they need to know to keep America safe. I'm an American. So, sitting there and listening to what this doctor would be presented, I would at least accept that and talk to me because I'm an American. And I'd like to be safe, so I would think that I'm going to hear some advice about being safe. But what I heard made me scared. And I'm a woman. What I heard did not empower me to discern between somebody who's a terrorist or criminal and somebody who has a boot on or a head start. And if that's how I felt that was wrong, I can't imagine what you feel. For those of you who are not the problem that we see in this type of discourse is overgeneralization. We start off.